you have some good work playlists? Oh yeah, this I yeah. mean this is what I these ones I seen these are what I play all the time when I'm working. Not I mean obviously I like to listen to like ambiance and like jazz coffee shop whatever but these are like channels that I constantly listen to. Okay. Yeah, I'm down. Like I said, I've just been kind of creating my morning work playlist, my nighttime. I think it's I called it my nighttime grind. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's gonna have a little more hip hop and uh, some house, like a little deeper house. Uh huh. Oh yeah, I good, think you, good vibes like that. I think you'll like what I'm listening to. Yeah. Yeah, the morning got good mashups. Yeah, I just sent you five. That's a, I think that's a good place <laughs> to start. Five okay, because I know I, I I fuck with the the lo-fi beats. I know you like that too. Mm-hmm. Um, I get down with those. If I have headphones in, do you ever listen to like eight D music playlists? Okay, next time you have your headphones in, um, I just got your email. Five playlists this man sends. That's looking out. It's not I just one. Like it's not just one. He's making sure my ass is covered. Yeah, and like, it. I love when I have the apartments myself too, because mm-hmm. I keep my office door open. So and I play the TV from the living room on. Okay. So that it's not like. I mean, I like listening to music with headphones, but there's just I think d- music can be digested differently, and it, I think it impacts you in different ways based on like how the sounds coming in. So I like having kind of like an open like apartment wide music vibe and when i'm in another room so that way like it's it's relaxing it's i'm with perfect. you yeah yeah whenever i come over to do work at your house i've like i'm in a good environment yeah it's, i get productive and it's a nice environment you always have good candles yeah oh always <laughs> sense and sounds that's yeah. where it's at sense and sounds <laughs> good consonants yeah and yeah and i mean we, we keep bringing up carl's episode but yeah just i know we asked him like what his ideal like setup is like what his ideal working environment is and yeah carl hibbert fortunate yeah. lifestyle clothing yep. check it out two-time podcast appearance two time yeah um but no yeah it depends when i'm working in the day on what i'm gonna listen to but uh yeah i have like a playlist for everything mm-hmm. like any scenario i got a cruise in one okay so yeah i'll have i'll have some more housey stuff but then I'll have things like NWA, mm-hmm. you know, classic, easy, oh, yeah. you know, the must. Gotta get a taste of it all. You know? Yeah. Little outcast. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, what's going on in the world of Tim? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving week. Thankful. I mean, we thankful every week, but. Actually, speaking of Carl, I'm a little warm, but. But. Ah. Uh, Got my half and half. <laughs> the shirt. Carl Hibbert. Yep. This is a, a custom from him. I think he sells a good amount of half and halves. But this is his design, mm-hmm. as they all are. But I guess one of his more his uh, consistent ones that performs that really well. Good. Yeah, I like this one. Similar to the one I have. Design on the right half and then kind of just straight yeah. color on the left. Yeah, he... Uh, and it's a comfy shirt too, mm-hmm. you know. You get if you go to like a I don't know, not to bash stores I like, but your generic stores like a generic t shirt after a year or so, like it just it's faded cloth. Mm-hmm. And this just feels I know it's newer, but just feels like it's gonna be a, a better better cloth in the long run. Yeah. Sorry. Out. Sorry, I cut you off. So Oh no, you're good. It's World it's just, I was just saying it's Thanksgiving week. Extra thankful this week because my whole family's uh Coming here to Indy, and yeah, it's gonna be. My mom was like, uh, "What? What do you want to make? Or what do you want to bring?" I'm like, uh, "Well, we're gonna bring buffalo chicken dip, but I've been eating a shit ton of fruit this okay. year, so I'm just gonna bring some fruit. Big thing Ooh, of berries. You gonna do like a fruit salad? Uh, if you want to call it that, probably not gonna be a salad. Like, what I'm gonna do is I'm I'm just gonna get blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, and then pomegranate. I was about to ask. And they just put them all in. I was going to make sure you threw those pomegranates in. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. Honestly, I'm just going to buy anything that the store has. And they've kind of, Kroger is where I shop most of the time. They've kind of phased out of the mangoes. So I've kind of moved mm. over to another tropical fruit. <laughs> you know how it goes. Tim just island hops with this fruit. 
uh, yeah. based on the seasons. Yeah, I've been putting it in my uh, my yogurt. And I He's an island boy. <laughs> <laughs> Pomegranate's been going. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, that door was open. I had to walk through it. Yeah, yeah, I left it open. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm putting the pomegranates on my my yogurt. My uh, I put uh, almond butter on my uh, podiac cakes, and I put the pomegranates on there. So yeah, we get we get an experimental. I like here. it. I loved putting other berries outside of blueberries and pancakes. Yeah. Like raspberry, oh, yeah. strawberry pancakes. It's a move. Yep. Yep. Now I'll still throw chocolate chips in there. It's just, that's never going to change. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, you could, you ever try to do everything about also making like a dessert based around dates and like oh, a nut yeah. butter. I'm sure there's crazy desserts this, yeah. using dates. I know how much you love dates. You could send like the fruit and then have this crazy wild date dessert with yeah. some almond butter. I'm sure you like melt down some chocolate. Or what if you bought like fudge from okay. you know fudge? You melt down fudge. Oh man, you can do some wild. Yeah, I'm going on a rabbit hole after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just thinking out loud for you, Tim. Yeah, this is good. You know, you got to be the one that brings the the real heat. Yeah. To the party, like oh man. Now I'm second. Did you guys? Did you guys try some of this? No, keep the fruit. I like the fruit idea. Yeah. I'm saying, but if. Take it a step further. If the urge came to you to, hmm. Yeah. Make I'm not a, just showing up for Thanksgiving. This I don't know. Year. We're Only talking about mind. it. It came to my mind. I had to say it out loud. I yeah. know how much you I like, like your dates. I like I it. I still haven't gotten on the date in the almond butter. I just, I, I keep forgetting about it when I go to the store. Where do you, yeah, well, I'm, I'm just saying. Where do you I, get your dates from? Because you my, love your I dates. I get mine from Costco. Costco. I think the Costco ones are perfect. Really? Yeah. Better than like a Fresh Time Whole Foods? Yeah, because. Kroger Meyer. The, the I think a date, I like when they're like squishy and when they're like, they still have a lot of moisture in them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like different stores, they like the quality. I mean, even though they're in a container, they're on a container. I just feel like how the stores store them in the store and how they transport them, like the exterior temperature. I think it has This man is going into yeah. the level of operations when it comes no, to I his food. Like, I, I want it to be like, yeah, like that. So I, I think Costco has, has the best ones. More right hardcore here. on your fruit than Kramer is on his. <laughs> I love it, dude. It's, it tastes All like right, a, Costco I mean, dates. Okay, put the nut butter on it. It literally tastes like a like a Reese's at this point, except it's semi healthy. All right, that, dude, you're <laughs> saying a lot of things that I really like hearing. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Keep talking dirty to yeah. me. Yeah. And I read that if you eat dates in the morning, it gives you an energy boost. If you, I mean, obviously you get they're good for brain health and energy boost all around. But they say if you eat them in the morning, first thing, you get a nice little energy boost. So if I have dates and I have coffee. I'm going to be on rocket fuel is what you're telling me. That's exactly how every morning has been for me for the past month. And I've hmm. I've been blasted off every morning. Interested. Yeah. Okay. All right. I see you. Yeah. Productive. Right. Productive Costco morning. dates. Costco dates. <laughs> I'm down. Dude, I got a card. I'll yeah. go. I do love Costco. But some things, I'm like, man, I need one of these. I don't need a month's worth of this. Mm -hmm. But anyway. I don't know. If you eat it consistently, it's. Yeah, it depends what it is. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Got his, I'm just amazed that you go to Costco at any time of the day, any day of the week. It's always busy. Packed. Yeah. Packed. <laughs> I try to go either morning, like between eight and nine mm -hmm. on like a weekday. Yeah. Or more nighttime, mm -hmm. like towards the end of store. Up. I don't mind going later. But you're asking for it if you're mm -hmm. lunchtime or rush hours. Like they just don't bother. Yeah. But yeah. Anywho, anything else going on? You got some good trips. Planned? Yeah, I'm just go going to Florida next week, first yep. week of December. So more to come on that one. When, when Doing we, some golfing. Yeah, golfing then Disney World and just, just a different, just different scenery. Just do, doing some work down there. Excited to, to get in the the warm weather. But yeah, we, we may do an episode while I'm down there. Uh, more to come on that later. But yeah, yep. excited for that trip and then. Um, along with that, we got some exciting interviews coming up. We yeah, have uh, we got some Rachel Pretty, the the founder and owner of Rose and Lois Coffee Shop, my favorite one, and then the uh, the founders of Sun King, co founders of Sun King. Dude, that was fun. They yeah. were both really fun. Yeah, but those dudes were they cracked me up, man. Yeah, they're, they're a riot. Yeah, according to Wikipedia, I mean, I don't know how they base this, but they, I mean, obviously they have their own Wikipedia page. They say they're the largest brewery in Indianapolis and the second largest in Indiana. I don't know. If that is like up to date or how accurate that is, but it definitely they, seems like they're big they, enough to be they like push the a biggest. lot of beer, man. Yeah. They're slinging. Did they say they're top top two hundred or top one hundred? Yeah, but anyways, they're doing a good job, and like you'll learn why in that interview. Like they're just 
They learned a lot along the way. So. Yeah. Buy some beer, man. <laughs> Wee Mac is really good. Yeah. I know people love the cream ale. I like the cream ale, mm-hmm. but I like I like the Wee Mac more. Yeah. I haven't had Osiris in years. That's that's the one that's super hoppy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That'll kick you in the teeth. Yep. But uh, yeah, a lot of good episodes. We, uh, last month, we really cranked it up on interviews. Yeah. It's just, it's fun. Like, fun reaching out to people. I mm-hmm. mean, we're, we're doing it out of value for you listeners, but- I mean, we're, we're also trying to focus a lot more on giving business owners, not only in Indianapolis, but everywhere, just a platform to share their story. And yeah, I think it, it's good. We've, we've kind of focused more on like local lately, but obviously we like to, we like to keep our, our sites wide and like we like to bring anybody on. So yeah. Yeah. Well, people are willing to do more in-person stuff now. Mm-hmm. So you know, I think that's part of why we're hammering it locally is people are down to do it. So let's rack it up before the holidays really kick in hard. Yeah. And, no one's available for the next three months. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. But uh, yeah, cool, man. Yeah. Um, what about you, sir? You know, What's speaking of golf, man, I went to Top Golf recently. Yeah. I don't know why I can't play as good on a course as I do at Top Golf. And I know, like, <laughs> it's Top Golf. Maybe I put less pressure on myself. I don't know. But I keep my head down at Top Golf. I, I get. Mm-hmm. Even if I'll go a little right, that's my tendency is I'll slice a little to the right. Um, but then I'll have really spectacular shots, like drive-worthy shots with an iron. And I'm like, where is this when I really need this? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it either because that's the way golf is, man. Like you, you'll you'll go out one day and hit the best best quality of shots in your life. You'll go out the very next day and just – I think, that's that's the nature of the sport. It's, there's some unexplainable things. Yeah, so, I think yeah. part of it is I always use that little rubber tee that's built in. Yeah, and so the, that, yeah, that definitely helps me get under the ball because that's a consistent problem with my real game is getting under it enough. Like I'll hit it too high, mm-hmm. or I'll like make a divot. It's usually where I land. Yeah. So I think that's definitely helping. Yeah. But, but I tell I tell still, us to, like I tell everything us to else everybody, just goes yeah. better at top golf. I tell this to everybody, regardless of skill level in golf. Like usually, I mean, we're all, if you're doing something wrong, it normally only comes down to like a couple things. Like yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into the golf swing. There's a lot of different fundamentals, and there's a lot to like study on the game and stuff. But when you're talking about your own personal swing and the way you hit the ball, it's a lot more simpler than what you think. Mm. So. That's, I mean, it's usually the case because there's no right swing in golf. There's no, there's no mm. right answer. Like obviously there's fundamentals, but sure. Yeah. Just focus on what's comfortable for you. Usually comes down to a couple yeah. things. So I guess more top golf. Yeah. Less real golf. Yeah. Oh, and I will say about top golf, <laughs> I've been playing golf for a very long time. I, I feel comfortable whenever I go out and play, but when I go to top golf, there's some times where like I'm on the second or third floor. And I'm still just like a little wary about that edge. Like I try, I try to really. <laughs> I never think twice about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know. That's just me. Maybe I just had a few drinks. I don't know. <laughs> no. But yeah, I'm no. always like, like I know it's not gonna you happen. Stop. I know it's it's designed the ways you're not supposed to happen. But like, I'm always just like looking at that edge. <laughs> oh, dude, that's funny. Yeah. I'd never give it a second yeah, thought. Uh, yeah. Well, now you're going to think about it. Interesting. No, probably not. No. I'll but think yeah. about it and laugh. Be like, huh, Tim thinks about this. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm glad you're worried about your safety, though. Yeah. yeah. As am I, but fuck, I, I just, don't even uh, think Maybe about I just it. plant that idea in my brain to just overcome fear and failure. Just mess up a lesson, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I dare someone to challenge themselves more than this man. All right. Well, we... Uh, so I'm at the muscle mobility clinic okay. uh, with yeah, Dr. Owens going? twice a week. Going well. Um, obviously, it's slow getting started, as mm-hmm. are most things. But uh, we have we have a handful of patients over there now, which is is cool. Uh, people kind of putting their trust in us, getting used to like what we do. So I imagine it'll take a month or two of word of mouth to really see things kind of ramp up in that aspect. But I know they're doing a lot of marketing and sales for us too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, then had another, uh, company reach out, wanting to have me and my coaching company at this, uh, this event in Broad Ripple same day, but like that morning and, um, they're like, Hey, we think you'd be a good fit here. Consider it kind of like a farmer's market of, of health and wellness businesses 
in the Indianapolis area. Mm -hmm. Like we know Monica from TWR, we used to go. I was like, oh, sweet. And so I was like, that'd be awesome. I was like, but I'm, you know, I'm also thinking as soon as I read that, I was like, well, I want to like promote Dr. Owens. Mm -hmm. Like he's helped put me on um, in a lot of scenarios. I want to help the clinic. Like they're helping, helping grow my business. And so I was like, hey, could we like, all come she goes well you have one table so however you want to come and represent yourselves that's up to you so i'm like okay sweet i go to the owner big mike i was like hey man how much busier and crazier do you want the day of your grand opening to be Mm. he's like i'm listening and uh we're chewing beef jerky that he made makes his own jerky it's awesome so we're having jerky and i'm like well we have this thing that's i think it's like another three hours in the morning i was like but Seems like it'll be good awareness for people. We'll have good eyes on us. I was like, so what are your thoughts? I was like, but I think it's beneficial. So whether you're going to go or not, you know, some of us need to go and rep. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, well, I can maybe do the first couple hours. We're still ironing out details. Um, And then he'd kind of go get ready at the other place. And me and Doc would finish running the table the rest of the morning and yeah, because, you know, they, they help promote me and my business a lot. They send me a lot of business, and, you know, I'm always trying to think, how can I repay that? Yeah. So I it's was a like – good lesson. No I was like, like hey – yeah. yeah, I was like, hey, we're all going to come then. I was like, we'll come as, as muscle mobility and all have our own things. But, um, yeah, so it's weird how people start kind of contacting you slowly about this thing or that thing. And, you know, sometimes they're garbage and sometimes – or something like this that's going to be mm-hmm. i think pretty legit yeah um so yeah stuff with the clinic is going well good love hanging out with them um yeah still doing the stuff at the gym so still having clients there which is nice it's yeah. fun kind of having a couple locations so yeah uh yeah is there anything that you're like currently looking to improve or adjust or like refine within your like service offering like anything anything like process that you're doing to serve clients that maybe you're yeah looking to improve or like change right now or i think right now i have all the channels i need to be in right now from like nutrition to rehab to personal Mm -hmm. training i've added couples training yeah which i I never really thought right but i train a couple and it's it's really fun it's a great idea so like the last time i i had them for a session you know we'll do i i kind of set it up similarly to our CrossFit classes where you know, I warm them up, we get mobile, get them ready to move. We do some strength work. Mm-hmm. I'll have them, I'll slowly introduce Olympic lifting depending on who it is. Not, not everybody right away or maybe if at all, but with them, we'll do something like that. We'll do some strength, some squats, some deadlifts, something where they're going to work on muscle building and then we'll get the heart rate up a little bit. Mm-hmm. So kind of Metcon style. And I had them like do a partner style workout where they split all the reps, but they're working together to, to see how many times through they can get through mm-hmm. uh, those those movements. So it's fun. But to answer your question, I, I think right now I have my my lanes Good. on offerings, and I've like I said created a few that I didn't mm-hmm. foresee. Um, but yeah, right now I'm. I don't think adding more. I think adding more right now would not serve as well. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, good. but good question though. Yeah, yeah. No problem, man. Dude, total random thought though. I uh, I don't know lately on the road, but when I think about it, all the time on the road, people that drive Acuras are really beautiful people, Tim. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever noticed this, or if you've noticed it with a different. You got car. data on this. You only got an Excel spreadsheet. Only anecdotal, right okay. now. But I will work on taking pictures while I'm driving between 30 and 80 miles an hour of people driving Acuras to prove my point. Yeah. I mean, have the laptop open. One finger for typing. One for, yeah. Okay. Like being a cop. I right? yeah. have the laptop to the side. Yeah. I actually, I'll call it in. I'll call you and be like, Hey man, I, I got a beautiful person driving this Acura. I got to FaceTime <laughs> you in. But yeah, go ahead. Anecdotal. Anecdotal. That's, that's the evidence I have, but okay. you know, I'm comfortable enough to say I've seen good looking men driving Acuras. Mm -hmm. And then whether I know or have seen uh, women drive Acuras, they're always fucking gorgeous. I don't know what it is about. Not that I'm mad about this. I'm just Mm -hmm. something I've noticed. Okay. And you'll see it. I've seen it with a few things. Seen it with uh, 
like uh, Mercedes too, mm-hmm. but Acuras. For whatever reason, that's what I see the most of. I'm not trying to hate on any other brands of cars. That's just what mm-hmm. I see as of late. Mm-hmm. So, anyone driving something else who's like, hey, I'm hot as shit. I'm beautiful. I'm not saying you're not. Yeah, just that's what I'm noticing. Yeah. Love to all. But yeah. lately, Acuras, I'm like, oh, wow. Beautiful yeah. person. Wow. It's wow. amazing the things we notice. When we're, yeah, right. When we're driving. I hope I'm focusing enough on the road. Yeah. I so far so on, something like kind of unrelated, but I always like if I go like similar routes, I like know what kind of cars are parked at like certain businesses because someone works there. Oh, just because okay. like, it's parked in the same spot every sure. time you drive by there. Yeah. I'll notice like different stuff like that. But yeah, it's amazing like just the patterns we like we notice when we drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good <laughs> pattern. Oh, nice pattern. Nice pattern. Yeah, dude, it is. We skipped fall again. We skipped fall last last year where we got like mm-hmm. 10 days yeah. and we've gone straight to winter. What The other thing I've noticed, see, I don't think I could be a good stand-up comic, but I think improv things because I think of funny stuff that could be a good bit, but I don't know how to make it a good bit. Mm. But like guys, we refuse to wear a winter coat. <laughs> like we will wear a hoodie in 10 degree weather before grabbing a winter coat. We will be near death from cold exposure. Under 50, women got the Ugg boots and heated blankets and they're ready to go. Oh, yeah. They're stocked, locked, and ready to rock. But I don't know what it is. And I do it myself. I'll wear a hoodie and it's 20 degrees outside. I don't know why. Mm. Wim Hof, you know, climbs Everest in shorts. He's fine. So we're fine. But I just think it's funny that we will go through just discomfort unnecessarily for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. It's like looking in the fridge 14 times in a row thinking you'll see something different to eat. Hmm. Is this a build toughness? I don't know. Dude, I don't know. It's maybe if you're colder or if you like... Look, I know I'm like tough. I don't have to like just not wear a coat. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when we're cold, we like we flinch up, right? We like flex up. Maybe mm-hmm. it's to help the muscles grow. Yeah. Because shivering warms you up. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. All right. Let's get into some real life experiences, Tim. Outside of being cold. What you got going on or business updates? Um, yeah, no, not too many updates on, on the business. Um, I would just say, just going off what I talked about last time, I'm almost done with the, the skeletal, skeletal outlines of my Ooh, good, good adjective. Skeletal, yeah, yeah. Wow. Outlines for my eBooks. Yeah. And I've kind of, golf class. and I've decided I'm going to break it up into three different eBooks more to come on that okay. on three different topics, but, uh, working on, working away on those outlines and, um, getting to the point where I'm, Trying to like set like the right environment too to write this stuff, like kind of switch it up and yeah, so nailing that and, and kind of get getting that la- lined out and excited to provide more updates on that. But yeah, just continuing to. I, I know we posted a quote today, today Tuesday, yeah, today Tuesday we posted a quote about um, how the quality of questions impacts like your conversation with. That was someone. one of my favorite ones. Yeah, so I'm just I'm really trying to milk that as much as I can in my business, like whether it's talking to people on the phone, on the introductory call, learning more about their goals yeah. and then be going a step further and just making sure when I do a deep dive of a resume, asking meaningful questions about someone's resume and experience to, to kind of extract some of the, the best things they've done. So really, really, I think that's a unique skill. I think that separates like an average resume writer from a, from a good one or from a great one um, is the ability to ask questions. So really trying to just continuously improve the way I do that. Yeah. Um, verbally on the phone and like following up via email like stuff like that nice so, yeah good 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 stuff going on with the business right now do you have a question where you think it's this is probably one of my top not like most top notch questions that other people it's very unlikely if they're asking the same do you have a question like that that you ask your clients yeah i would say one of i'm my not kids. trying to give away your trade secrets no, that's okay but maybe I mean, like number three or four on this, if i yeah. if i if i help yeah yeah if i help someone out with, with this that or who, fuck who it i dare resume. someone to do it better than you yeah no I, I i'm willing to share the knowledge yeah i would just say like i always ask someone like what are you looking for out of your next role that your current one doesn't provide you because usually when people hmm, when people okay. approach me like there's a bunch of different reasons why they're looking for a job maybe they want a better work-life balance maybe they want to move somewhere specific maybe they want to do something in that next role that utilizes their skills better. There's a bunch of reasons why people do, but I think that tells you a lot about a person's goal is that question right there. It's like, I mean, leaving a job is a very 
I mean, it's a very, very big step. So like if, if something's going to cause you to leave it, it's got to be something that's really important to you. Mm. So I like to ask that question. And I think yeah, a good service, whether you're writing a resume or giving someone a nutrition plan, like you, you can't like provide a good service unless you truly understand what they want. And like you got to talk in, in, in their terms and like what they want. So I think that their answer to that question, anything that I say, the rest of the call has to be somewhat catered to that. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. I like that. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. Consider that's my it question. delivered on that one. <laughs> yeah. Got so the, yeah, the new mailman. <laughs> Sorry, Malone. <laughs> Carl delivered. Yeah, but yeah, I, I love that question. Yeah, that's good. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Man. Yeah, business conversations, conversation with your family, like anybody who you're trying to develop a relationship with. I think. Yeah. I mean, the quality of the question sets the tone. Yeah. And it's so much better when you don't have the, oh, where are you from? Like, you know, like the rush questions yeah. like in college. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. And even like relationships, like marriages, like people who have lived together for multiple years, five, ten years. Sometimes it's easy when you see the same person every day to like, I mean, you'll go day. I mean, you you'll sometimes go days where you don't ask meaningful questions because you see them every day. But I think that's the sign of like a, a really good relationship marriage or specifically, yeah, specifically marriage is like. Being able to not just like be like, oh, how's your day? And then they, they answer and be like, no, oh, that's cool. And then like yeah. don't prolong the conversation. So I yeah. just think it's a skill I think is, is very underrated. So. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I know we're always trying to think of new and improved questions for the show. Yeah. And it always like inside I get excited when people are, they tell us, oh, you guys had really good questions. Yeah. Like, that jacks me up. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, yes yes yeah and i try to turn it the other way around like i i try to think about the people that i meet like in just random circles and the ones who are the most memorable are always the people that ask the unique questions so yeah I try to reciprocate that good the other point. way around yeah yeah but yeah good things going on with the business for both of us right now Hell yeah. i always love sharing what we're doing yeah it's it's cool you know i'm in two locations and working on this other show uh, yeah so i'll talk a little bit yeah but it's it's revol so one guy is a cannabis consultant for Simply Nano, so he's super knowledgeable and all that. Kyle Harbaugh, and then our other buddy Adam helps Kyle with his extract energy drink, so zero cal, zero sugar, no aspartame, none of that bullshit, and uh, it's really good stuff. And so Adam helps him with that. But Adam's family has a foundation for TBI, traumatic brain injury. That's what his brother died from, and so they have a foundation for that scholarships, donations, things uh, along those lines. And they're kind of partnering up extract and the foundation. And then because his brother, the level of cannabinoids helped kind of protect his brain mm -hmm. a little bit too. So that's kind of why they're joining cannabis and TBI research. And when I say cannabis, like I'm not talking about getting wasted, like getting super fucked up. Uh, yeah, THC reacts better with CBD when they're used together. Um, but like, I love CBD. I'm a big advocate of CBD. So cannabis is referring to the whole plant. Just want to make mm -hmm. sure people aren't like, Oh, you're just getting fucked up. Like, no. Um, so it's, it's a show it's called coffee and cannabis. And they asked, uh, they're like, Hey, um, you know, we know you're always promoting simply nano. You're really big onto that. And I've loved learning about it. Uh, would you want to help do this show? I was like, okay, cool. And we're going to work on having a coffee, uh, there's a lot of things in the works right yeah. now with some wild interviews. So it's cool. Yeah. And I like learning like that industry is fascinating to me, mm -hmm. like especially with performance, how can CBD improve performance and recovery? Cause that's how I use it. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, how, how else can athletes use this? Yeah. Um, outside of, you know, they can do a lot of good wondrous things. Uh, can't say it can cure stuff, but it helps people in a lot of uh, different ways with their health. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've kind of been up to on the side a little bit. Oh so. yeah, a lot of exciting stuff there. And Dude, and I'm just crazy. The way I look at it for you too is like, you're just going to become an even better podcaster by doing it. Like it's just yeah. it's more reps for you. It's it's doing more shows. It's more opportunities to talk to people and ask good questions. So yeah, yeah, I think it's a it's a win win for everybody here. Yeah, and it's just continuous networking too. Yeah, of you know people like being on podcasts. Mm -hmm. So who knows who might be on coffee and cannabis that then wants to come on off the dome. Like, oh, you have another show? Exactly. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll do that show. 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you just never know. But it's, you know, we've talked about real networking, like having a circle of, of go-getters and winners. Mm -hmm. So being around someone like you, being around Kyle and Adam, uh, some other friends that I know are really getting after it and have some, some high goals set and they're, they're working it. Uh, yeah. Those are the people I'm yeah. really staying close to the chest. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So good to hear. Yeah. But uh, should we get into some business tips or yeah. career tips? Yeah, I don't definitely. know what we want to call it. Uh, so with uh, each of our businesses, whether this is your first episode, or maybe you haven't listened for a while, we're trying to add a little more value and um, just kind of go through something maybe we've seen as of late or something that we've seen with clients uh, in the industry. So for me, going more health and wellness, you know, maybe that's nutrition or movement based uh, depending on the discussion, but holidays are coming up. So I want to talk about a uh, quick holiday eating tip because I don't want anyone to feel restricted. You know, mm -hmm. oh, I've been, I've been on my fitness goals. Like I've been really going to the gym consistently. I'm loving it. i uh, making awesome progress, huge gains. I don't want to ruin it with the holidays, but I love those foods. Like, look, I'm going to eat as much stuffing as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. That's just me. Yeah. Well, I'm probably going to have four pieces of pie a day, mm. extra dairy free, whipped cream, whatever it is. I don't know what it's called, mm -hmm. but it's awesomeness. And uh, yeah, not going to worry about it. But Amen. you know, when you're, if you're really worried about it, like, yeah, I really want to stay on top of it. I want to have some things I enjoy, but still stay on track. Start with your proteins and your veggies. You, you know, whatever protein you guys have, turkey, ham, both, go for your, your favorite proteins. Go for the veggies. Even if that's like a green bean casserole, yeah, have some of that. Yeah. Um, and then go for the carbs. So after you eat those, then go for the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, sweet potato casserole, anything like that. So go in that order. Like I said, if you are concerned about it, if you've been on top of it, don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Drink and eat. It's it's the holidays. Uh, and then for dessert, though, go for things that are homemade or stuff that you don't get all the time. Right. Like store-bought stuff. Like, yeah, it's convenient, but... But half stuff, my mom has this rule. If it's going to taste amazing, then have it. Mm -hmm. So treat desserts at the holidays the same way. Like, you know, those cookies probably probably look really good. It's like, oh, well, it's the holidays. Kind of, I'm not worrying about it today. Colin said so. <laughs> it's like, well, go for the stuff that, like I said, you don't get. You yeah. know, something your grandmother made, something your aunt made, you know, that outside of those things, you don't have. Mm -hmm. And go ham on those. I like it. So... Yeah, proteins and veggies first, then go for your carbs. Like I said, I'm going to go heavy on on stuffing too uh, and, and pumpkin pie, but that's just the way it is. Mm. So enjoy yourself. Feed the soul. Um, yeah. That's, what are you drinking? That's what I want to know. What are you going to be drinking? Depends on, on what we're doing, but usually for uh, Thanksgiving, we kind of have this. <clears throat> so I'm more my mom's side. My brother's more my dad's side. And for whatever reason, however long ago it started on Thanksgiving, my brother will be kind of inside helping my mom. Like his thing is he always peels potatoes. Nice. I don't know what it the is. Potato peeler. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he is he is the peeler. And okay. Okay. I'll sit outside with my dad around around a campfire. Um while, you know, traditionally we were deep frying the turkey. 10, 12, I don't know, a lot of years we did that. Recently, last few years, put it on this old Weber he's got. It's not mm -hmm. a smoker, but it's kind of egg shaped, so it naturally just smokes it. But while that's going, me and him just we take a couple bottles of booze out there. We just kind of chop it up, catch up on things, and yeah, and drink while we quote unquote watch the turkey. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. So, what but a time. in terms of what I'm drinking, so there I might be doing uh, martinis on the rocks. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, you got the, you got the station downstairs. Yep. Make, yep. Yep. You so made one for me. Down I'll there. probably I usually do that when I go home, um, and I'll probably do the same for for Christmas. Very nice. If I want a beer, I'll have a gluten-free beer, but usually I like a good martini when I go. Good, man. Yeah. It's a man who knows what he wants. On some things. Yeah. <laughs> on beer and yeah. alcohol. Right. Oh, man. What uh, what kind of tips are you going to lay on us today, Tim? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you Give us some tantalizing tips from Tim. Yeah, you mentioned oh, it. Oh, wow. Oh, damn. Wow. Nice. Look at that. Look at this. SAT. Use that in vocab. your category game. Yeah, but you mentioned it when you were introing this section about – a lot of the, the topics that we develop in this section are based on what clients have, have told us and like problems or 
situations we see with our clients. Uh, so for this, for my section today, I hear a lot of people who I work with say, oh, I wish I would have written down more of my accomplishments from this place or mm -hmm. oh, I, I can't, it's been so long that I've worked here. I, I don't remember everything I've done. And that's very common to like, I mean, you, what, no matter what job like you're working, you're going you're gonna to be doing a lot of different tasks and responsibilities. And sometimes it'll feel like the weeks blend together and a lot, you have this deadline for this person and this deadline. Sometimes it's tough to just budget time to write down your growth in that position and what you've done. Uh, so that's what I want to like communicate today with this is like, if you're someone who, if you're negotiating a raise or if you're looking to make a job change soon, or you're looking to make a resume update soon, regardless of how close you are to that point, regardless of if you're in a position where you're not even planning on leaving anytime soon, make time to write down your accomplishments and make time to write down what you're worth. Cause I think that's what it all starts is knowing your worth. And while you yourself believe in your worth and you're confident in yourself, like how are you going to communicate that worth to other people? And yeah, you may have it all up in your head about what you've done. And, and I think that's good, but I think to really organize your thoughts, especially on paper when you're writing a resume or if you're prepping for an interview, it's good to have at least things written down in reference so you can go back and, and remember what you done, did during this year or this year, because it, it does blend together. So just some examples of things you can write down is money you've earned for the company, whether you're in sales or um, some type of customer facing role or business development role, money you've saved for the company, whether you've improved a process or uh, made someone's life easier, a process or program that helps save stress for someone or time, and then uh, a process that helped maybe people in your company communicate better, whether it's within your own department or cross-functional departments and then maybe like any awards you've received, whether it's a department award or some type of recognition, ask yourself, why did you receive that? Like, what did you do to receive that? So I think those are just some things that you can write down. And that way, when the time comes where you have to sell yourself to someone on paper or an interview, you have everything ready and it saves you a lot, a lot of time and stress to think of that stuff. So, yeah, I think that's, and no matter your job, whether you work for yourself or someone else, mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea or a good thing to do. Yeah. Because I've, I've not done that. Yeah. Like I've not written down all the things that I have done up to this point because I don't think I've done anything up to this mm -hmm. point. Even though there's a lot of steps. But um, I like how you mentioned it gives like a, a satisfaction of your growth. Yeah. Because sometimes we'll leave a job. Like I was guilty of this when I left Simon. Like, oh man, what a... Not so much then, but I have other jobs where you just really disliked it. You're like, man, I didn't get a thing from that job. Mm -hmm. Like, well, is it that? Or you don't want to have learned anything out of spite. Mm -hmm. But when you write stuff down, even if you hated it, I think that'll give you a good sense of kind of humility of like, wow, like I learned something here, there. Like I'm always learning something that has built – the building blocks of, of me being where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Cause so, so many good reasons. Yeah. Cause we can take certain odd jobs for granted, but then like what real life applicable skills like, Oh shit. Like I, I didn't learn that from school. It's from this job I hated, but that really helped me out. Right. Like, yeah. And it's all, it's all about memory, right? Like mm -hmm. we, we have a limited memory. Like there's only so many things we can remember, but if it's all, if it's written down, it's always going to be there. Also, I mean, I, I, I compare it to just like investing money into, into a, an investment portfolio. Like the more thoughts you put in, into your, your notebook of ideas, notebook of growth, like you can always go back and revisit that at any time. You can always mm -hmm. go back and access that money in that account. You can always go back and compound that money and go back and take an old thought that you had and maybe improve upon it or at some point in time. Maybe it because you wrote down something you did, maybe it gave you inspiration to, to generate more money for yourself or mm -hmm. or provide value so i think yeah. it's good to have all all that written down yeah yeah i should do that i need to be better me too writing stuff me too like yeah. yeah we all could yeah i need to be better too so. man i got a lot of work to do too <laughs> thought i do what makes you happy. i'm thinking i'm growing hours. thinking i'm growing and shit no i'm not even i'm not oh, writing the won't. notable things down tim don't undersell yourself <laughs> come on now <laughs> but when i ask my boss for a raise then what <laughs> I have nothing to show myself. Luckily, your boss is cool. I have though. nothing to show myself. <laughs> He's you. All right. Take us into book talk, Tim. Let's get down and nerdy with it. Yeah. So 
look at my notes here. Yeah, so book talk for today, uh, Psychology of Persuasion by Robert, Doctor, sorry, Doctor Robert Cialdini. Yeah, excuse you. Um, and so he talks about like the different methods of how to persuade people and how to get people to your side. And uh, one of the chapters that I want to focus on today is the law of reciprocation, which honestly, the point I'm going to make from this book doesn't even really have to do with the initial concept and like what he was trying to communicate with it. Um, so like the law of reciprocation pretty much says that if you give value to someone else, if you give free value, if you do something nice for someone else, like they're going to be like inclined to return the favor in some way. But I'm going to kind of take this like a side road and be like, I mean, the book says like we are obligated to the future repayment of favors, gifts, invitations, and the like. So that's pretty much what I just said. So like giving it to someone else, like if someone does something to like favorable for you, give it, to, give it back either to yeah. them or someone else. But yeah. today I'm going to talk about giving it back to someone else. Uh, Cause I feel like, I mean, we, we're in our spot today, like whether it's a place of success or development, because not only did, were we confident in ourselves, but we also learned something and we learned something from ourselves, but we also learned a lot from other people. Um, so I think it's important to really take what you've learned with other people and give it to someone else in some way. Um, that's kind of the, the main point I want to, to, to make there is like impart the wisdom on others and things will come back to you in, in my opinion. And you should always like at any like opportunity, try to give free value to someone else uh, based on, cause like there's always going to be someone who was maybe going through something you were and like vice versa. Uh, so I think there's always an opportunity for you to take what you learned in that situation and give to someone else. Cause you, you never know who may need it either. So yeah, that's good. That's the one what I took from that. Yeah. I like that. Um, you know, we always hear from a lot of entrepreneurs about paying it forward, mm-hmm. you know, whether that's mentorship or you know, a donation of some sort to a charity, like whatever it is, but paying it forward, whether it be your time or your money. Uh, and that's what this reminds me of, of whether you pay it forward to, to someone else who had helped you or someone who maybe can't even help you. You're just helping them because you want to help somebody. Mm-hmm. But with this rule of reciprocation, that's kind of made me think yeah we should repay things when people help us yeah we want to help them you know scratch my back scratch yours but also do things without expecting the return right you know maybe someone just you know how much can i really help grant cardone mm-hmm. right if he helps me it's just because he wants to help me uh be better and win like that's it i really can't help him like what, what can I do for Grant that he can't do for himself? Right. Um, so, I mean, drastic example, but you know, even if it's, you know, a friend of yours who just needs help or something, whatever it is, don't expect repayment. So don't start doing things like, Oh, they'll get me back eventually. Like, no, like, do you have friendships or transactions? Like, mm-hmm. don't, don't make it about keeping score. But yeah, I like no, that. I like this though. It's, it's a big, yeah. Big pay it forward vibes for sure. Big fan. Mm hmm. I wanted to uh, bring up one that we've talked about before. I've read a while back, thanks to your lending it to me. Don't sweat the small stuff. And uh, saw a couple things throughout the last week that just made this chapter uh, stick out to me about resist the urge to criticize. Because mm-hmm. um, like we can all criticize whatever someone is doing, whether that's the same job we're doing or they're doing something something different that we've never done, like we can criticize. Criticize people driving. You know, tell people to be better drivers all the time, but someone might think I'm not a good driver. Um, <laughs> you're right. No, they don't. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> but like when you criticize people, there's a difference between that and, and good feedback, but criticizing, it doesn't do anything for that person. Mm-hmm. It does nothing except show that you have a need to to criticize. And that's all you do. No one's ever going to, even if you have a good idea, but all you did was criticize, no one's going to take you seriously. It's just, it's not going to happen. Um, and, and like people won't warm up to you. Like right. if you're like, why don't people talk to me about anything? Like, well, if all you have to do is criticize, then you know, who's going to tell you anything? Yeah, because you're just you're just gonna shoot it down. They might just need an ear to bend and not not a mouth to listen to. Yeah, and it, it may not even have anything to do with the message either. Like you could right. deliver the same message, except you could deliver it with the motivation to help and like teach the person. Right. So yeah, it's all about how you deliver it. 
right? And the, yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, in in the day and age where everyone gets ridiculed and criticized for for breathing, uh, you know, especially people you're close with or just people you randomly meet at a party, just don't you know fight your urge to criticize because mm-hmm. like what is it going to get you or them? Right. No one's going to gain. And then I saw something. I think I think our buddy Marquise, who's also been on the show, uh, he might have posted about it. Someone I, I saw it online, but it said I'm pretty sure it was him. But it was listen to someone without delivering a relatable story about yourself. Ah, I like that. And oh, that spoke mountains to me because I'm definitely guilty of that. Because yeah. we always want to seem relatable. Yeah, we want to find commonality that we you know, air quotes, understand what that person is going through. Yeah. It's like, we might think we know because our situation might have been similar, but we're never going to feel what they're feeling. Like, you know, yeah. so it's, I, I understand it's a good place to try to relate. Like I said, I do it too, but it just hit me like, oh, just let them tell their story without them making it about me. Like, oh, I can relate to that because this happened and then this happened. Oh, I, yeah. and you know, then it's like, wait, dude, I just, I was kind of telling you something. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's so fuck true. my story, right? Yeah. yeah but so it, it hit me. I was like, oh man. So in, in the last few days, whenever someone just tried to say something, I would really think, like, oh man. And it's hard. Yeah. Because like, oh, I have this good story I can tell about myself and it fits perfectly in conversation. Just leave it alone. Yeah. Relax. Yeah. But. That's good. Yeah. I like that. I really liked that one. Um, so I Shout wanted out to throw Keith it in. for sharing. Yeah. Like I said, I'm 99% sure it was him. I'll have to text him after this and, and ask him. And this will be a good way to rope him into listening to the whole thing too. Hey, I think it's like towards the end. I don't know what you meant, but like just take a listen. <laughs> Tim, make the show notes unclear. So, so we've got to keep it. If you, if you checked out this episode, appreciate you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Love you, man. All right. Uh, Tim, anything else? I think I'm good on my end. All Have right. a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Uh, be safe if you're traveling. Have fun. Uh, you know, eat well. Feed your soul. You know, have a good time with with good company, good people, and uh, yeah, just have fun. Be safe. Uh, as always, thank you for hanging with us. Uh, you know, we have a good time doing it. We hope you guys have a good time uh, listening and watching along with us. As always, if you have. People that you would like to see us uh, maybe try to have on the show, topics you want to see us cover, whether that's real life things, work things, career, whatever it may be, personal, um, everything in between. Hit us up on on DMs, on social media. Instagram is at Off The Dome Radio. We'd love to hear from you. And please head on over to iTunes. Leave a five-star rating and review. Helps us get momentum, uh, getting seen uh, a little more on the podcast space. We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, y'all have a great rest of your day.